We're often as reading teachers, reading specialists, actually talking about fluency in reading passages. And how we define that term uh, always includes at least three components. Some, uh, and people do uh, have slightly different variations on definitions, but they will always include accuracy, rate, and expression. We care about our students' passage reading fluency because primarily because of comprehension. There is a, a, a lot of good research evidence that has connected fluency to comprehension. When we're at the very beginning stages of reading, we have to build accuracy and fluency or rate at the letter level so that students are able to recognize each of the letters of the alphabet and then eventually their sounds accurately, but also moving toward automaticity. And that's really the technical term when we combine accuracy and rate um, to an appropriate skillful level, it's automaticity. So kindergarten and first grade teachers should focus on automaticity at the letter level, the sound level, the word level, the phrase level. We can even add that third component of prosody or expression. Uh, and as soon as possible, we also, we never want to disconnect word reading from meaning. So when students are decoding words, we want to connect that with the language comprehension too. It's, especially, it's important for all of our learners, but especially important for our students who are uh, learning English, multilingual learners. When we think about helping our students become fluent readers in second grade and up, we hope that most of them are have established the basics of decoding. They understand that basic process. So much of the instruction will focus on for our typically developing students will be focusing on uh, in being able to read increasingly complex text with fluency. So we get there by doing uh, a variety of things. One is reading to the students, having a teacher read text, uh, various types of text allowed to students and really emphasizing um, uh, fluent reading and modeling that. But that's not going to be enough to continue to develop their own fluency. They have to practice it themselves. Uh, doing some oral reading can be very helpful. Uh, in part because we want to be sure that they are reading with reasonable accuracy. We want to hear that they're using expression appropriately. We want to make sure that they're having opportunities to read at an appropriate rate, not too slowly, not too quickly. Um, so uh, rereading can be a really nice way to do that. Taking a passage and um, having students read it a couple of times, maybe silently first and then orally. Reading to partners um, can be can be really a, a helpful way. There's evidence about the value of partner reading where students can take turns uh, reading the same passage and then and the other one reads it again. They might read chorally together and doing it in a way that's fun and motivating for students because just rereading text itself maybe is not a whole lot of motivation, but we can turn that into games and students can uh, set goals for themselves uh, and do lots and lots of good uh, oral practice is the best way to continue to build fluency skills. Fluency is not fast reading, fluency is fluent reading, which is the foundation is that accuracy and rate, and then we layer on expression to that. So the biggest misconception around fluency is that we want students to read faster and faster. We want them to get to the point, instead we should think about getting students to the point where their reading mirrors spoken language because of comprehension, because that's what we that's what our brains understand, and so that facilitates comprehension. Mm -hmm.